Quickly, I want to celebrate every one of you. You are welcome to his presence. And may the good Lord bless you in Jesus' precious name. We're praying. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by the prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. In other words, the scripture is, is a warning. Giving us a warning at the same time, give us the way out. The first thing you make us understand is said, be careful for nothing, that means worry over nothing. But in every situation you'll find yourself, give thanks to God. The Bible says, give thanks to God because it's mercy at all forever. That if not the Lord be on our side, we will not be here. God preserve us. God has a plan and purpose for our life. Things may not work the way you want it, but definitely it's only the living that can actually trouble. We discover from the scripture that praise is one of the most powerful spiritual weapons that provoke the acts of God. Praise is one of the most powerful weapons that provoke the acts, the miracle, the signs, the wonders, the whatever you desire, you need from God. Pro, uh, praise is a key or is a mantle to provoke miracles. And yet, many are, are not aware of its potency. Many people are not aware of the potency of praise. Because praise shifts your focus from you to God. But most times, prayers make you focus on your ability, on your strength that I can pray myself through. I can do this one. I can do that. But the truth is that praise is more effective if you want me to you write another word than prayer. Because prayer go through process. Your answer come through process. Sometimes come through the angel to you. But praise will go direct to God. So on the other hand, those who know the potency of praise are yet to experience the benefit embedded in praise. Do you know when you praise man, that's where the man feel. Or when somebody prays you, you feel fulfilled. You feel that everything is well, even when it's not well. And most time people praise you when you are you are down, but because of that praise, something in you said, I can make it. We must understand that why there are several wonders in praise. There are also enemies of praise which stop the art of God in our life. As powerful as praise, as powerful as praise, there is enemy of praise. There's enemy of praise. Now, before I mention the enemy of praise, let's quickly look at praise. What did praise bring to us? Why is the enemy want to stop our praise? Why the enemy don't want you to praise God for maritime breakthrough? Why the enemy don't want you to praise him for the fruit of the womb? We'll look at that. But now let's look at the potency of praise. Praise brings breakthrough, especially in a tough time. What that means the Bible say in all things, give thanks. It did not say when things are working well. It did not say give him thanks only when you are in abundance. It did not say give thanks to God only when you are blessed. It did not say give thanks to God when you experience financial abundance. In other words, the content of that, that in all things, in a border, in, you know, in a farming, when there's nothing, 
to show up in your life. He said, give it thanks. Wanting praise to praise brings strength. Praise brings strength. Psalm 82, uh, sorry, Psalm 8 verse 2, Psalm 8 verse 2. He says, say, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies. That you may silence the enemy of their the enemies and the avengers. But because one of the things you must understand is that is the praise, is the cry of infant that actually make you a mother. Because if you give back to a baby and the baby do not cry, the, 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 everybody will be worried. The doctor will be worried. The parents will be worried. Everybody will be worried. But as soon as the baby cries, shout, wah! Everybody will be happy. I say, oh, glory be to God. He said, from their mouth, come. And thou shalt, that baby shall, wow, strengthen the mother, strengthen the father, strengthen the doctor, strengthen the nurse. I say, the child is alive. And if that baby don't cry, the doctor will be doing different things. The nurses will be running up and down. The mother will be crying. And, uh, 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 and, and when Jesus quoted that verse, Chapter 21, verse 16. He said, He said, Out of the mouth of babes and not seen infant, you have perfect praise. He said, The praise that is coming up from the infant is a perfect praise. That in other words, praise can be polluted. Praising people because you want to benefit something. And you know what? People can praise you all the time because they want to benefit something from you. But you know what? God has nothing to benefit from us. We have all to benefit from God. That's the reason we need to praise Him. We need to praise Him. Number two, praise silent the enemies. One of the reasons the enemy fight against your praise, it don't want you to have any reason to celebrate. It don't want you to have any reason to rejoice. The enemy wants you to be permanently be in sorrow. But when they said they want you to weep and you are celebrating, they want you to beg and you are celebrating. They say, Oh, you will never marry and you are still rejoicing. And they say, Oh, you will not, never, never will you carry your baby. You are bouncing every day. You know, when we do dedication, a old man walked to me and said, I never knew you don't have a child of these years. And there's no sign. Because the enemy wants that condition for you to be sorrowful. And sometimes you lost your joy because when your focus is narrow to your pain, you lose your tired joy. Listen, most times the enemy allows this affliction so you can draw your attention out from draw your attention from God to himself and lose focus on God. That's why I say, look unto God. Not unto the affliction, not unto the challenges you are going through. Yes, you have not married. God said, Don't focus on that. Yet there is no child. He said, Don't focus on that. Yet there is no money. He said, Don't focus on that. Oh, he said, Look unto God, the author and the finisher of our faith. What that means? Just have little faith. God will finish it. I have the faith. I'm going to have one million error. He said, Just have that faith. I will finish it by bringing the money. Don't doubt. Amen. After the out, you understand this quickly. Out of that place, we praise, and the enemy is silent. Number three, the praise activate deliverance. In the book of Second Chronicles, you see our praise bring total deliverance. Amen. And number four, because of our time. Number four, okay. Let me just share this with you. No matter what you are going through, make it a point of make a point to praise God. No matter the challenges you are going through, make up your mind that I'm going to praise God. Make up your mind that I'm going to praise God. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Because the Bible says in the book of Psalm 18 verse 17, Psalm 18 verse 17, it says, Rescue me from the powerful enemy, from the foes who are too strong for me. If the circumstances are overwhelmed, praise God. No matter the circumstances, God fight for us where we praise Him. 
In Abu Second Chronicle, chapter 20, verse 21. When they began to praise God, the Bible said, God lay ambush. God himself lay ambush against the enemy of Judah. So, don't be carried away or overwhelmed by the problem of life. But praise God. You can see what there is such a wall over your praise. The enemy only fights your praise. I read something in the book I, I wrote here by Jack Taylor. Jack Taylor is a, is quoted and said this. He said, complaining is to the devil. What praise? Why praise is to God? When you are complaining, why God has not answered my prayer? Why things are not working? Oh, this, you go to devil because God doesn't listen to complain. God doesn't listen. No. If you complain, God, why me? God, if you don't give me money, I'm not going to serve you. If you don't give me husband this year, I'm not going to serve you. If you don't give me wife, if you don't give me money, if you don't give me child, I'm not going to serve you. God doesn't listen to all this complain. Because both the devil and everybody is created by God. And God is not the problem of man. Because he established, he established the authority in Genesis chapter 1 when he said, you shall have dominion. In other words, he said, I have given you authority. I have given you dominion. Yet, we lost our dominion as a result of sin. We lost the dominion. But Jesus came to restore us back to our original dominion. That means all the promises in Genesis chapter 1, verse 25, I mean 26... That will be fruitful, fruitful, that dominion, all was forcefully restored back to us. So we're restored back to the garden of Eden. That's the reason we can say as a child of God, we can enjoy supernatural supply. So complain is the revise of praise. Complain is the revise of praise. It is up of our, it, it, you know, complain, drain our strength, amplify the enemy's influence in our life. When we begin to complain, he apply, he, I mean, amplify the strength of the enemy. But as we begin to praise God, it weaken the enemy. It destroy the enemy's strength. You know, when you praise God in your affliction, heaven rejoice that despise what you are going through as a prison. That is when the apostle Paul came to a decision. He said, what is going to separate me from the love of God? What will separate me from the love of God? Is it tribulation? Is it nakedness? Is it trial? Is it poverty? He's saying all this, me, I'm more than conqueror. In other words, I have conquered before the problem comes. So when the problem comes, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up because of that problem. There are many of us inside of appreciating God. We complain. But remember, what you are complaining about, somebody died yesterday. They couldn't experience it. Oh, I've gone through many pain. I don't think God answered my prayer. You know, sometimes we move from one church to another church and feel that God is not here. God is just looking at you. You have changed. You have moved to another place. You have been there for years. Yes, there's no result. Because what God wants is your praise. It's your praise. Amen. And bring, we all do all the time. But when we chronically complain, the sword of God gave us, it get torn on us and rip havoc. When we complain too much, the sword of joy and praise give to us return back to destroy us. And we complain will only lead you to depression. But praise will, like I said, praise brings strength. It brings strength. No matter what you are going through, like I said, make it a point to praise it. And when it all is well, develop the practice of praise, so you are well equipped to face whatever comes your way. God is worthy in all praises. God is worthy of all our praises. It's not a mistake. It's not because we don't have the world, we don't have the message. 
and we declare a full month to praise God out of 12 months. Every October, we gather to praise Him like never before. We praise Him in all dialects. We praise Him in all that. I believe you believe this month. We praise Him in Yoruba. We, we dedicate a day. Let's praise Him in Yoruba. We dedicate a day. Let's praise Him in Yoruba. Nanusoko. We dedicate a day again. Let's praise Him in Igbo. And let's praise Him in the, in, in, in the Af, uh, Afrik. Wow, language. Just to praise Him. Because it's worthy of our praise. What the enemies of praise? I'm going to fast. I thought I would spend time in this way. What the enemy of spirit? Number one, the spirit of heaviness. The enemy of praise. What we talk about heaviness, we are talking about despise, broken heart, sorrow, discouragement. So, the enemy of praise is discouragement. Discouragement. Like a songwriter said, don't be tired in your prayer, don't be tired in your praise. We don't know where they will answer us. Keep on pushing. Keep on pressing. We don't know where the Lord will come. Don't give up. I understand this might not be well. Don't attempt murder or suicide. When you commit suicide, that is the end of everything. That's what the Bible says. A living dog is better than what? A dead lion. That means as powerful as a lion. When he's dead, evil cats is better than evil cat is better than a dead lion. Don't die yet. Tell someone, don't die yet. And don't give up. Something bigger is ahead of you. Let me tap that your neighbor. Maybe that one doesn't need it. Look for the other side. Say, neighbor, you are not permitted to die until you fulfill your purpose on earth. Say, therefore, my beloved, dear my beloved, don't attempt to die and don't give up. Don't give up. Put your mouth in the ear. Say, whisper, don't give up. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Don't give up. Listen to me. Your present level might not be where you want to be. But that is not where you are going to end. Because most of you know yesterday you are not here. You are better. You know, you are better than yesterday. There was time in your life you live with your parents. And a time come in your life you live with some of you. You start your life in the one room. And now you are a landlord. And for the fact that you are still in one room, do not mean you will not be a landlord. It does not mean that you will not be the landlord. I was listening to a story. Somebody will tell me a story about somebody who sold his house. It was a bank, something, something in the UBA. He sold his houses, duplex, a jackpot to abroad. And when he got to abroad, he was living in one room. Somebody that was living in duplex. You know, many of us. Eh, our economy will be all right one day. I, I can only encourage you. Me, I never see the thing that will make me say, I want to relocate. I love this, my country. I'm going to succeed here in Jesus' name. I know some of you are not happy. Say, Pastor, you won't be there to me. I don't go. My spirit is there. Amen. How many of you spirit are there? Eh? Your spirit is there. <laughs> Amen. But the truth is that. Let me depart as 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 my message. If God have established you here, don't bother to go. You will regret it. Those who sold their this thing, they live here. Where I live in London, I live in central London. Anybody that came to visit me this in the house where we live, they will say, Wow, this is a big man, this is a big one. The owner of the they're very big. And in that environment, they're about too black. Everybody's white. So I don't understand what they were saying. And they asked somebody, I said, why people, everybody that come here, he said, no. He said, if they gather 10 black, not just Nigeria, who live in this house, maybe only one. 
when I started visiting, and I know the reason, that black is very hard to live in central London. Because why? Very expensive. There's some place your car cannot enter. Your car to be 20, 24, 25 more there to drive in that area. Praise God. But someone was living there. You see, let me tell you, some of them, you see big man, big man, they live in one room. They will come to Nigeria and talk to the almighty big man, but they are living in one room there. Amen. If you visit, if you visit 10 black that live in three bedrooms, celebrate them. Out of that 10, maybe only one or two. So why would I say my duplex and travel? I started staying in one room. It's because we are not grateful enough what the Lord has done for us. Amen. Number two, murmuring and complaining. When you murmur, you complain. You provoke the anger of God. Like I said, listen, he said, in the book of First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 10. Anybody in the media that they want us to read together? But because of my time, let me not wait if they come. With he said, it is written, neither mom ye as on them are murmured. murmured. We are destroyed by the destroyer. Destroyed by the destroyer. Murmuring is defined, murmuring and complaint is the repeated voicing of your dissatisfaction over the situation God has placed you in. Murmuring and complaining is repeated voicing of your dissatisfaction over the situation of God has placed in you. Now, what we talk about, murmuring and complaining. He should say, I'm not, I don't like where God keep me. I'm tired for here. Why will I be here? You know, I don't know. The truth is that I appreciate God for many things in my life. I don't know why God just, nobody taught me many things in my life. I just grow to program my mind. My mind is programmed. Very funny kind of. Sometimes I, do, I try to understand myself. I can't understand myself because I program myself the way that if I have Corolla, you have Bentley. I'm not going to jealous you. I'm not going to have you. I'm going to be okay with it. Because I know my, when my time comes, I will get the latest. You know, I was praying at the time. I was praying, the car was praying that God should give to me one car they called First Lady Corolla. But the first car I got was better than that. And since that time, there's no car that said, okay, the car I have now. The yesterday car is better than today. Never come. Every time there's a better one. Every time there's a better one. Listen. Be contented with what the Lord has given you. Don't complain. Don't complain. Oh, you know there's some people so worried. Oh, why would God give me two guys? <laughs> oh, they will come all that pressure lead to depression because you want a male side. Somebody have a male side. He said, no, I need a gay side. I don't know what God will do for many of us. You have two guys. You say, oh God, why two guys? Some people send their wife away because of that. And you know that it's what you give woman, it will give back to you. The woman did not manufacture himself, say, I will do it. That's the reason many of us, I don't know. You have three guys. You say, Listen to me. I hope this by the way the car is so eh? no be no, no be gay again. Somebody is just praying, God, if you can give me one. If you can give me one, and you have three, you are putting the woman under pressure. When you get to lay boys, you put them under pressure. I I, I, I need the law. I need this. If some ill luck, I will destroy you. Amen. Either you like it or not. Data state capital is Nasaba. Woman, carry and go there. Where, where are all the men? 
Where the men? Where the, where the, where, why the number are coming so cold? Number are coming really. The number are coming anywhere. Woman took it there. Appreciate God. If He give you five days, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. The only prayer you should pray, Lord, let them marry a, a responsible man. Because when you have three, uh, five guests, for example, you already have four, uh, five sons. How many of you believe that? You already have what? Five sons. When you have five boys, you already have five daughters. All you need to pray, Lord, this my daughters. Give them a, you know, because there's some useless men. Don't let them come close to them. Where start of destiny should not come. That's your prayer. If God decides to kill all of them, how will you feel? I don't know if God can actually kill all the children. When you complain too much, okay, okay, this is your guy. You complain. Okay, no worry. I'll give you no. That's why me, I don't have anything to do with gender. Hey, there they are guys who they are boys. Don't they consign me? Woman be na woman be. Begin a begin. Don't trouble yourself or nothing. Don't trouble yourself. Murmuring and complaining is the reason God destroyed a nation. Amen. Everything we murmuring about never grow. Rather, it diminish. I was telling somebody in my office, I said, if you worry too much, your womb can block. W- worry, depression can block your womb. I said, make sure you're only happy. And the husband said, now you're the warrior. Me, I'm not the warrior. I know God will do it. No, don't worry. Tell your neighbor, my God will do it. There's a song by Father. I know my God will turn it around. How many of you believe? I know my God will turn it around. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. We have seen my yes. God turn it around. There are so many, many, many times in my life that I have seen my God turn it around. Tell somebody, oh yes, say God will turn it around. No, my God will turn it around. I have seen my God turn it around. Oh yes. There are so many, many, many times in my life that I have seen my God turn it around. I've been trying to be respect to the person. Yes, God will turn it around. Listen, have you ever come to you, you encounter your situation in your life? It look like that's the end of your life. How I many of you ever gone there before? You look at this thing, eh? Hey, if I don't get her, I will die. And suddenly, did it just play out? You not die? Nothing happened to you? How many of you have seen that thing like that? The worry was so calm. This is my song to stop on. This is my song do this. He go kill me. Suddenly, he become a governor. <laughs> suddenly, he become a joy giver. That same person. A woman told me, said, when I look at my daughter, I see God. I see no man. He said, this child is sick to an extent. We are bad on the child in the hospital. And I said, I can't see this child die in my presence. And I walk out of the hospital for three days. He said, I don't know how it happened. And they were said, this child came out. They were looking for the mother. This child restored back to life. He thought the hospital have gone to bury the child. He said, God can bring this child life. He said, anytime I look at her, I see God. He said, that is why I change her name. I don't know the meaning in the robot. That is only God. And there's something he mentioned for me, but I asked the meaning. The meaning is only God or something like that. Holy God. Listen to me. Don't give up. And don't complain. Appreciate God. All oh, we be wed. You know what he said? He said, say unto the righteous, 
How many two will be well? How many two? Amen. You know, in Numbers chapter 11, it said, because of their complaint, it provoked the anger of God. And God consumed them with fire. You will not be consumed in Jesus' name. They are nothing to complain about, but they are everything to praise God for. Let me tell somebody, I want us to preach together. I said, there's nothing to complain about. But there is everything to praise God for. Number three, too much familiarity with God. And number four, the spirit of pride. Pride. Pride is one of the enemy of praise. Pride. I was telling my papa, somebody who was talking to me yesterday. I said, this guy, pride wants to destroy him. I said, pride wants to destroy him. You don't have. You have shown that you have all. How long do you want to kill you? You know, one of you are dying in poverty because of pride. Calm down. Take away pride. What is pride? It's quality of having an extensively highly opinion of oneself or other importance. You feel that you are more important than anybody. You know, I remember those of you in first service that said, humility will take you up, but pride will bring you down. Pride will bring you down. Humility is not foolishness. Like I was telling somebody uh, on Thursday, I say, you know your problem? I say, you take my simplicity and my humility for granted, but it doesn't matter. Take it for granted, but God knows my heart. You will exalt me, but you are the one that will suffer. When I told him that, it shocked him. I said, you, you take my simplicity for granted, Somebody is correcting you because you feel you are close to me. You take the same thing for granted. I said, do you know, you are the one that will suffer. I'm not the one that will suffer for the fact that you have taken my simplicity for granted. You have nothing to do with my life. I will still move on. And I give you an example. We did, we did an experiment. We did an experiment in the church with the workers last Sunday. We asked some people, what keep you in this church? That's why the challenges. Some people have been in this church for 11 years, 10 years, 15, um, 13 years. And I said, okay, what kept you? I asked these old people who had been in this church for a long time. And, and I told them, I said, do you, do you have everybody saying? Nobody, because I was in the middle, I said, nobody said, my teaching, my, okay, some people said the teaching. Nobody said the prophetic kept them here. And what they said is the character, is the way I approach people, is the way I address people. And that's what everybody was saying. That no matter the challenges you're going through, no matter your anger, when you come before pastor, he will just smile, everything will just go down. But I told him, I said, charisma and character is two things. Charisma, your gift, your anointing, will attract people to you. But what we keep them to stay with you is your character. Locally, they say, your beauty will take you to the marriage. But what will keep you in that marriage is your character. All oh, this is your English. All oh, this is your this thing. Somebody that can read can live in marriage and enjoy in marriage. And somebody that has PhD. Don't you think that don't you, most of the broken home, most of them are, they have PhD, BSc, with all their educational background, yet yeah, their marriage is broken. Where I want local woman for village who marry one professor, his marriage is just going smoothly. All oh, your grammar, your English, your dressing, your Queen's English, all of that, you can't have a home. Tell your neighbor, calm down. I don't preach beyond my time. The one I want to explain most, I never have to explain them. Holding on to the past, the enemy of the enemy. Don't hold on your yesterday. Let yesterday go. For the time you fail yesterday, did not mean you fail again. Don't bring your past into your future. Some of you, oh God. I will talk to one of my daughter and I said, listen to me. I said, the Lord told me you are afraid. What is your fear? He said, I'm just afraid. Uh, relationship. Uh, if I enter this one, fear will grab me that. If you're not going to work now, I said, take it easy. I said, if you, if you go to this relationship and the brother leave you because he said, 
you too nag. By the time you enter the second relationship, you will learn not to lag. If you complain, see it too dirty. When you leave this marriage, by the time you enter the next one, you will try to be what? Clean. I said, God is taking you through process. Don't worry. Likewise in business. For the fact that you fail in this business, the normal you fail tomorrow. You just learn another way to do another business. Let's rise to our feet because of our time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Rise up, rise up, rise up. It, it, because if you rise up, I'll close in time. Now, finally, being offended in him. Be offended in him. The enemy, stand up, I'll, I'll close with this one. The enemy of praise is that you are offended in God. God, where are you? <laughs> Some of you would have prayed, say, God, where are you? Where you one day? One day your father house. You, uh, ask me, now your village you won't stay. Say, God, where are you? If it's truly you are there, he, he's there. Eh? He did that before your four, four, four father. Not be your time. God can say, okay, no, make I go stay. A May I go stay. What's your mention your village name? Uge Lee. Uge Uge. You say, Uge Uge. Is it a name of village? God will not say because of you. Say, hey, because you pray, make I change my throne. Make I come stay your village. God, if it's really you are there, uh, if, if you can't say not there, what do you want to do? Listen to me. God is there. Before you were born, he has been. After we leave and go, he still remains God. After the second coming, he still remains God. There's nothing changing for being God. The time we have been offended in God are our stumbling block in life. It is written in the book of Matthew eleven six, And blessed is he whose server shall not be offended in him. Revise it. God is him that is offended in him. Don't be offended. Don't be offended. There are many a time we pray. We pray. Somebody die. Pray. Come back. We pray, pray, pray. Don't come life. You know, say so when we see another born, die tomorrow, we'll not pray. There are many times you pray for the sick. For the fact that you pray for somebody, no heal. If when you pray and the person is not healed, you are angry. That means you are taking the glory. You are telling the person, listen, I may be the healer. God is not the healer. One day, my younger brother, Pastor Ola, he brought dead somebody come from a colo colo. They carry the person dead. Come for this car, they pack it here. And they came to meet me to pray. I was going to scare them to show me this. Somebody don't die for you, you can't call and come. And you know, when I know this, I asked God, Lord, what should I do? The Lord said, no, you can't do anything. He's dead. Okay, Lord, what will I tell them to me to believe that you said so? And he said, they have problem with two wives. And one poisoned him. And I said, oh, okay. I call him. I said, where is the brother? I said, how many wives? He said, the man have two wives. I said, one, is, one of them is tall. One of them is short. And they have issue. And he decided to move out from the, the first wife to the second wife. And from there. He said, yeah, what happened? We told him. Oh, we told him. We told him. I was telling okay. And then we told him. I said, God, thank you. Don't deliver him from this. I said, there's nothing can happen again. He's dead. And he's dead. And that was... Praise God. So sometimes, that's why the Bible says, don't just lay hand. That's why the advice young pastor, somebody just come, somebody, hurry, receive. He said, lay hand not suddenly. Ask God. Because you go lay hand, you go lay hand, you go tire, nothing go happen. Amen. Every time we mark God wrong, we mark our path crook. For instance, in Matthew 11, he said, John the Baptist was facing a great crisis and as such as he began to wonder if Jesus was truly a Messiah. How many of you know of that one? He said, go and ask him, is it truly the Jesus Christ? Have you read that scripture? He said the disciples, say, go and ask, is that the true Jesus? You can imagine. And he's the one that told us it's Jesus. Now he said, ask. Because of that question, that's why he died pretty much shortly. He questioned the authority of God. Each of you say, Father, I am sorry. In every I will question your authority in my life. Have mercy upon me in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray that prayer.
In Jesus' name we pray. I conclude with this one. The Spirit of the Lord exchange our heaviness with the garment of praise. Now, I want you to do something for me. That area you are going through some challenges and you have complained about it. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I've asked you a question. Lord, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I've asked you a question. God, why are you not giving me money? Why are you not giving me children? Why are you not giving me... Lord, I'm sorry. And do it now. Lord, I can't do it anymore. I've been fighting to take the glory of this way. Lord, help me now. Help me now. Help me now. In Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. May the Lord keep you. There are two things God said we'll do in this service. I will be glad to pray for anyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And secondly, anyone that said these threats over my business that make you to think that that could be the end of the business I might not do business again. That look at the, if this business or this contract I don't know doesn't come that way my life has ended. The Lord said, no. I have never started. I want to do it for you this month before you end. Can you lift up your hand? I'll pray for that two persons, that two group of people. I'll pray for you when the time comes. Can you lift up your hands? I appreciate God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.